I guess. I guess that's it. I'll be back in a second. Hello, hello. Something, yeah, almost. Is it here? Volume, 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 volume. Oh, no, it's just me. Keep that. Oh, almost there. Great. Perfect. Cool. Hey, what's up? It's Trent. <laughs> uh, I think it's a small crew today, but you know we're recording. Never mind. Ma never mind. Never matter. Um, rad. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well. Um, that was some sounds. Uh, basically. Yeah, in the end, um, all the sounds we were hearing were generated in Crow itself. Um, so yeah, I was using, basically using Crow as a uh, full voice synthesizer, um, like a multi-timbral, four different things going on. Uh, it's pretty weird when you do that, because you know, it was never designed with that in mind. It was like an idea that came a lot later, but uh, you can still do some fun stuff, and uh, that doesn't have to be everything we talk about today, um, because I think a lot of these ideas apply as uh, control voltage things rather than just as oscillators, um, but I think it was easiest to kind of express why why they need to be written this way um, by going, by like using them as, as oscillators, because um, you could do a similar thing for control voltages, uh, but they simply wouldn't run fast enough to be able to hear them. Also, it's kind of a fun experiment, you know, like describing, uh, describing timbre at the same time as an oscillator. And not just static timbre, but uh, changing, animation. Um, yeah, okay, cool. So, I somewhat figured out how to um, have a better workflow in terms of, like, running things live. Um, which kind of fundamentally... Uh, fundamentally is focused... Still just, like, copying and pasting things into Druid, but... Um, I just never thought to do that. <laughs> you can just highlight, if you have a text editor by Druid, you can just highlight something. Command C or Control C it and then paste it into your 
into Druid. For me, I have to type, uh, I have to do Control Shift V to paste. I think that's a peculiarity to uh, some of the way that Linux works or some distributions, or maybe it's just my terminal. I'm not sure. Anyway, so you might, if it doesn't work, try Control Shift rather than Control V. Yeah, uh, and then the last, the other trick that I had is, it's not really a trick. Um, these three back ticks down here in the bottom left corner. Um, so what they allow you to do is send really long, long chunks of code. Because um, sometimes, like if you highlight a really big function, uh, something like this, this whole init function, it might hit like a character limit of like something that can be parsed all at once. Um, whereas if you put back ticks, you can send a whole script and then put the other three back ticks uh, and it'll all execute at the same time. Whereas if you don't do that, it might break it up into separate chunks and then you get syntax errors and all kinds of weird stuff. Anywho, uh, that's just some, some uh, housekeeping. Um, but the fundamental idea is all based around this word here, dine, and you'll see it repeated constantly throughout the code. Um, and dine is a really, it's a special function that turns, it, it basically takes a, a key value pair, so a name and a value, um, and allows that value to be referenced from your script so you can change it uh, without reassigning the whole ASL. Um, but also you can destructively modify it within an ASL construct. So there's kind of two sides to this coin and they, they both work simultaneously. Um, so you can do some interesting some interesting things and I, and I think that's kind of what I'm hoping to get into today. Um, so uh, yeah, we'll see. There's only a few constructs to learn, um, even even though they are a little complex. Um, but basically, we're going to look at dine, which takes a name and a value. And we're going to look at some modifiers that apply to dynamics. So which is step by an increment number, mul by a multiplier, and wrap by a min, and max. Um, the last thing to be aware of is that dynamic, the result of dyn, uh, it returns a table, but it's a very special table. Um, you don't need to know how it works, but one other thing that you need to know that you can do with it is you can perform arithmetic on the dyne itself. So I can say uh, dyne number equals one. I can add one to that table and the result will be two. Um, or uh, if I have like a, something like this. Uh, so I have a dynamic number and then a modifier. Um, this is going to give me the first time it happens, it'll give me the number one. The second time it will step it to the value two, but this plus one is still gonna apply. So we're always gonna be, be receiving out of this whole construction um, one more than whatever number is set to. You can do some arithmetic, you can do uh, addition, subtraction, you can negate the thing directly, you can multiply, you can divide, and you can perform modulo. And one last trick, which you almost certainly won't need, um, so don't, don't think you need this, you almost certainly don't, uh, is you can use the, uh, the pound sign or the hash, or the table, what's it called, like the length getter? I'm gonna, we're gonna go into the dark side of the moon. Um, 
And what that does is it basically freezes the number back in place. So in the same way that, um, yeah, yeah, that's nice. Great. I'm gonna, how should I do this? Make it a little bit more visible. Anyway, uh, forget I even mentioned that. You don't need to know it. Um, it's kind of like an under the hood thing that we use. Um, but there's some things that you can kind of hack around uh, if you know about that stuff. But we, we won't need it today. So let's forget. Um, we can do all this, and then we can do plus any arithmetic operator. Cool. Um, yeah, so. In terms of the actual performance, there was four voices. Um, it starts with it started with the voices two and three, um, and they're both using the same construct. Um, they're using this this function called ramp, which is an ASL lib function. Uh, it basically gives you um, a on a, an LFO that's a triangle, and then you have a skew parameter to go from sawtooth to ramp. So zero being uh, so which uh, instant rise and like slow fall and then if, when skew is one it gives you a slow rise and then a sharp fall so I think ramp triangles uh, sort of. uh, nevertheless uh, what made this interesting um, well there's, there's two parts right the first one is I was just using these like just ratios to um to do all the tuning. That was kind of the whole performance, actually, with a few microtonal things. Uh, but this FF parameter, basically what this means I can do is kind of modify the frequency on the fly. Uh, we do one divided by that number because I want to treat this number as a frequency, whereas uh, ASL typically uses time, uh, like period. So they have the same construct, and then for the second parameter, which is the, the skew value, we were dynamically controlling that. Um, so it started, starts at 0 0.5, and then we increase by 0.1% uh, every cycle of the oscillator, and then we wrap it between 0.5 and almost 1. If you let it go all the way to one, there's like a really sharp discontinuity at the at the end. So I chopped it off a little before. And that's what was giving that kind of, that pulsating, uh, slow rising bass sound. Um, but yeah, so it started off for the first section as just this, this two over three ratio, um, left and right speakers. Then I introduced this steps function, um, it's actually really simple. Um, so it, it's, it's just this function here, which is almost identical. Actually, you, you could just use the, um, what's it called? Uh, the oscillate function. It's the same thing, and then you can pass in these dynamic variables. Um, I'll show how to do that in a bit. Uh, the, this got interesting by using a a sequence, which was this long chain of numbers, which were, you know, in my mind, musical, but in the end, somewhat random. Uh, and all that was doing is basically changing the frequency here uh, of that fourth channel. So it was dynamically up updating the, the speed of this steps function. So it would sound at different tones. Uh, and then the last one, the last one's pretty strange. Uh, it was me trying to like push this dynamic thing to the limit. Um, so it's here. We can go through this function a little later on. Um, it's doing it's doing two things. Firstly, though, it's just an oscillator, and that's these two lines here. Um, the trick is that this first value which is kind of the level, the, the height it will go to. Um, it's a dynamic variable, which we multiply by a number slightly less than one. 
meaning every time it cycles, the, va the value decreases exponentially towards zero, um, or logarithmically towards zero, really. Um, gets closer and closer and closer, but never gets there, uh, which gives you that kind of classic decaying envelope sound. Uh, so that was being, that was happening. And then we were also modifying the frequency, um, but that comes through this, this part of the function up here, which is probably pretty uh, opaque because it is. Um, I think after writing some of this stuff, I wanna kind of go through and, and update the API a little bit to make these kinds of things easier. But um, the concept is ASL if basically means it will only the table inside of the if, which is these two lines here, um, or three, I guess, with the curly brace, will only execute if this top element is true. And truth in ASL is one or greater, which is a very strange choice, but it's for some uh, annoying reason that I couldn't work around. The point being, this is a counter. So every time the oscillator oscillates, this counter adds one. Um, so if, what this ends up meaning is every 30 cycles at a given frequency and with a given volume, um, this will become true. The wrap function will reset and will do these two things inside. And weirdly, they are, they are changing the voltage, but they it's not really on purpose. They're just, this is the only way to get other calculations to happen. But the purpose is it resets the volume to maximum so it can decay again, and it changes the frequency. All right, I feel like that's gonna, every, if you haven't glazed over already, then like, uh, I'm very impressed because I feel like I'm not even sure what I'm talking about anymore. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of, that was the whole performance. This ending piece, I just wanted to like, we'd been droning on these same two tones for over 20 minutes. So I thought, why not kind of sequence some pairs of frequencies, which fundamentally started as uh, increasing harmonic numbers then divided down. So this was like uh, two over three, um, this was four over five, but then I, I don't know, got weird, six over three, yeah. So six over seven, weirdly. And then I was like, well, let's make it kind of more interesting. And these are, you know, two uh, inverse ratios of major third minus sixth. Um, felt like a nice way to lead back into this uh, perfect fifth. Point is, uh, there was some sequencing of the kind of drone notes, um, which happened inside of this clock function. And every time you would call this function, it would step through the list 24 times. Um, so it would give you basically 24 chords. Uh, and at the end of that, it would just stop. Um, and so I added this ending so that it would always land back on that like original uh, fifth interval. Okay, uh, I've been talking too long. Why don't we, why don't we make something with it so that it is uh, easier to digest, hopefully. I'm gonna leave everything there, and we're just gonna kind of start again. Oh my god, what am I doing? <laughs> okay, uh, so. Maybe, uh, yeah, why don't we, rather than so everything so far has been about oscillators, but if we, why don't we slow it down to control rate? Um, I feel like that might make it actually easier to understand um, how this stuff is working. And then 
towards the end we can get back into some audio rate stuff if uh if we have time and if it feels kind of interesting so uh let me set up a quick patch here oh that's actually the one thing i want to leave I think we can all hear that properly. Yeah, okay. So, we're gonna, uh, so, so the patch here is just the first two channels of Crow are controlling, first channel is the pitch of mangrove and the second channel is air, so volume essentially. Um, yeah, so what we want to do here, the, the kind of original classic way you would control it is like you would use like a voltage to control the pitch and then for the second channel if we're doing uh, volume like maybe you would apply like an LFO you know, and we'd say make it run once a second, uh, make it five volts big, and it'll be a sine wave by default. So let's just roll with that. All right, so we can run this. Let's see. Okay, my voice is too quiet. Yeah. Great. Okay, so this is fine. This is like very normal, very regular. Um, if you were gonna sequence the pitch, you might, you know, you could type it live. Like you could change it to. Like basically typing in melodies like this. Yeah, okay. So that's kind of the, the kind of standard classic stuff. But let's do something where we write our own ASL. Uh, I'm going to turn this down again just while we figure this out. So, uh, I think in a way it's going to be easier to demonstrate this with just using the volume to start with. Um, so, here we're applying this function called LFO. So I think maybe the easiest way to do it is we're gonna make our own function. Um, so rather than LFO, which is part of the ASL library, um, which is I have it open here. You can you can look this in the look look this up in the source code of Crow um, on GitHub. But this is where like LFO is defined here. You know it's it's actually just this ASL um, construction. This part at the top is about um, having default variables. These like one five and sine. So that's why you can type LFO with no parameters and it will just give you. I like a quick LFO. Uh, so one thing you can do, and I do a lot, is you can simply copy them. We can copy the whole function, right? 
so this would work as is. I'm gonna change it to LFO2 because I don't wanna destroy the clat the like the normal ASL. But I can save this and I can run it again and it should be as before. So yeah, seems good. Um, so let's make it interesting, right? Uh, so the first thing we can do, and this is this is kind of a fun one. You can um, you can use dynamics on these standard library functions. So rather than this value of one up here, um, saying that it's going to run once a second, we can make this a dynamic number. So we can say dyn and then uh, time, and then we give it basically a, uh, a default value, or like a, a starting value. So here we're going to set it to one second. I think it's probably two seconds, but we'll survive for now. Um. And the thing now is we can update it on the fly. So we can say output two because it's the second channel. Dyne, short for dynamic. Dot, and then the name that we gave to that dynamic variable. So here it's time. It was set to one. Let's change it to 0.5 or point point four. Right. So you hear it kind of moving around. You know, you can you could change this quickly. You can sequence this, say with a clock and a sequence, um, and that's like a nice way to ensure that the LFO never stops. Um, oh, I just remember a fun thing we can do later. Right. So if you if you were instead to do you know output to LFO 0 0.2 it can have these like jitters where it kind of like skips a beat it doesn't like stay smooth and continuous whereas with the dynamic variables uh, it really lets you um, change things on the fly okay, this error because I, I turned off I switch back to LFO, not LFO2. Okay, uh, so that's the first thing you can do, nice and simple. Um, so why don't we, rather than just say, uh, have it be variable, let's make it change. Um, and so the easiest thing to do here is, why don't we start it really fast? And then every time it plays, you want it to slow down. So we could say multiply by two, and what that would mean is every cycle it gets half as fast. Um, probably every twice a cycle actually, but let's see what that sounds like. Weird, okay. This is confusing to me, but let's let's persevere. Let's put back to a very small increment each time. So what you'll hear there is it's incredibly fast, um, and like it's running at a thousand times a second, and then we're slowing it down gradually. Um, we could make that maybe slightly more aggressive. Yeah, I put that on a filter. Oof. <laughs> um, in fact, let's let's try that.
So I'm just going to add it onto the third channel as well. And some resonance. Alright, so that's ridiculous, but you get the idea. It's a pretty, it's an interesting, like, triggered uh, envelope. Um, that's all well and good, but what if you want to, like, constrain that to some range? Or if you want to make it loop around in a different way? We can use the, uh, the wrap function. And at this point, I'm gonna uh, sh I'm gonna rearrange the code a little bit so it's easier to understand. Um, which for me, the thing I really like doing is just separating the these onto separate lines, the constructions. But you know, there's a lot of different ways we could do this. Uh, This will do for now. Okay, so so what this is going to do is basically the on the second channel, uh, which is controlling the air of mangrove, uh, we're going to start really fast still, and then we're going to multiply the time so it gets slower uh, by ten percent every cycle. 1.1 being, you know, yes, itself plus 10% more of itself. Um, and then we're going to wrap that value to a less fast but still very fast value whenever it reaches greater than 1. Um, I, think, I think that should do it. Let's try it out. So we get this like cyclic thing happening. It's not super easy to control, um, but it is like an interesting way to have this like kind of slowly accelerating or decelerating um, envelope that, that changes by itself. All right, um, I want to like, I want to kind of move in a different direction. So this is nice. This has been like an introduction to using the regular off the shelf uh, LFO function or attack release or oscillate. Um, but we didn't actually change anything in here. This is still exactly the same as LFO. Um, so why don't we change that? Let's, um, Let's return this back to, you know, some uh, standard values. We're going to remove the, the filter envelope. OK, so we're back to a uh, We're back to just a regular LFO. Um, so let's see what we can do inside of here. Um, so what we just did was like changing the, the speed. But one one nice thing I think is is having well we have envelopes right we have like the attack release function. But what if we want rather than an attack release that goes uh, once. What if we want to do like a burst generator? Um, 
So why don't we start there? I'm, maybe we'll, we'll re-change uh, this again, sorry. Uh, I'm just gonna call this mod, because we're gonna change what this function does a bunch of times. Okay, so let's keep it nice and simple. Um, so what I want to do is, let's say trigger an envelope eight times, right? So we can do that with a function called times. And what we can do here is we'll say, well, let's, let's rise to say eight volts, a nice, like big, strong envelope. And let's rise really quickly, one millisecond. Um, we'll just use the default shape. And then we're gonna fall to zero volts over, yeah, 10 milliseconds or 100 milliseconds. And then basically this, this loop here is gonna run eight times and then it'll stop. So let's see if that works. Oh, I think I had that wrong on my end. Okay, so you hear that. That's uh, these timings again are uh, they're kind of divided by two. But... Great. Okay, so we have eight little stabs. Nice. Um, and they sound fine. But what if we want to like animate the timing of those stabs? Um, I like the attack time but I want to um, have eight that kind of like, almost like flam together somehow. So let's try making the time of the release a dynamic variable. So we'll call it REL, short for release. And let's step it. So step is gonna do addition, essentially. Um, let's step it, let's make it shorter by 10 milliseconds each time. Let's try that out. Right, so kind of had a similar effect to what we had before, but it stops. You know, now it's like an, it's an envelope essentially. Um, and I believe you can, uh, maybe true. <laughs> uh, anyway, I thought you could re-trigger it, but apparently not. Um, still, you can now call uh, mod like this, you know. So we could this could be a burst generator, and it could take uh, the number of bursts as an argument. You know, we could add that in like this bursts. Uh, and like that, but we could also, you know, make it much longer, but it'll, it'll probably break because our addition is going to go negative at some point. Um, I think after 10. So let's see what happens. It might crash. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Well, it didn't crash, but it definitely got very, very fast. <laughs> Um, in a situation like this, if you want it to be potentially um, uh, limitless, you could use multiply instead. Um, so maybe multiply it by 0.9. So it will get smaller, not negative, but just 0.9. It'll get smaller, but it will be exponential towards zero. Like it won't ever reach zero. Which means we could try 100. There you go. You kind of end up in that like, uh, what's it called? Uh, FM kind of territory, like audio rate modulation sounds. And it just stops, it cuts off. Um, so that's nice. Uh, 
But yeah, in the in the comments, Eel Romance says bouncing ball, and it's like, well, yeah, this is really close to a bouncing ball. The issue is, the the bouncing gets shorter as it like gets closer to hitting the ground, but we're still keeping it at eight volts every time. Um, which is obviously uh, not how a bouncing ball works. In a bouncing ball, it bounces faster and faster, but the volume gets smaller. Uh, but we could do that too. You know, we can use that same rel dynamic value this release value, to modify the height of the attack, the height of the envelope. So why don't we try that too? Um, so I think the way to do that, we currently want eight. So let's insert into here this uh, rel value. So this is a little strange, and this is something that I think will change in the future. You have to always give it the name and an and a default value uh, when you initialize a dynamic variable. And it gets strange when you want to reuse the same dynamic more than once, because um, you still have to give it this uh, default value. So at some point, you know, it might be it might be that you can just refer to maybe like dyn dot rel or something like this or with rel as a as a string but um, for now we can't do that so let's just do it how it has to be um, so this this is what we have right we have this value of 0.1 and we know this value goes from 0.1 down towards zero which is fine but we need the value to go from 8 towards zero um, so the easiest way to do that is you can just multiply you know, we can take that number and we multiply it by 80, right? So the, by 10 to get to 1 to 0, and then by 8 to get 8 to 0. And note here that this multiply by 80 is doing the same thing, right, as this multiply, as this mol 0 0.9. The difference is because this is a method call, with like this, it uses this colon in the middle here, um, that means that it will change the value. Whereas when we just do a multiply up here, um, it's just going to modify it locally. It's not gonna change the storage. Uh, anyway, let's, let's see if it works. Nice. So let's do a, like a big, big long bouncing ball. Sounds good. Yeah, so I mean, that's like a, it's reasonably uh, concise, I would say. Okay, something like that. I think that's nice. Um, so now we have a bouncing ball function, great. Uh, let's move on and make something different. Um, so that was envelopes. Uh, we haven't really got into wrap. So what could we do here? Oh, we're, we're controlling the frequency too. So why don't we do something with frequency? Um, one thing you're going to notice is you can't... Uh, there's no like quantization when you're using it. Uh, oh no, there can be. Never mind. Okay, so this will be a, a fun one. So we're going to do um, a... We're going to voltage control the... output one as the, the pitch of mangrove, right? So we're going to make, we're going to quantize it to, uh, let's just use the chromatic scale. I think we can just do that. Um, let's try that out. Oh, did not like that. Great, okay, so we'll turn up the volume of the oscillator 
And let's just test that we can salute, right? Great. Okay, so we have uh, like a quantized pitch output. So one, one idea that I think is kind of uncommon in synthesizers is, is we very typically think of pitch as a thing that you set, right? It's a very descriptive way. You say, I want this to be the third note in the scale. It's rare to treat pitch as something that changes over, uh, as something that is uh, incremented or decremented. This, I think, was, interestingly, uh, way back before Teletype was a piece of hardware, um, Brian Crabtree, Monom, of Monom fame, uh, he made a, it was a Max patch, and there was, like, Teletype was, like, this, it was really just, a, a, like, a mini language in, um, in Max, but one thing that I found really fascinating about it at the time was you could... One of the operations you could do was to change frequency by some quant some quantity, right? Um, rather than saying, uh, go to the, the fourth note now, go to the fifth note. You could say, go to the fourth note now, add one note. And having those kind of um, stateful changes, while it's like harder to understand how the, the composition works, it can be really interesting. Um, so I kind of want to try and build something like that. And it can be really simple. Uh, so what I'm going to try and do is build like a, like a, an integrator, um, is what it's called in electronics. Basically, I want to have an input where I can say increase frequency or decrease frequency, um, and then have the voltage follow that as like a continuous thing. And I think ASL is kind of a, a strange, but maybe an uh, like a good way of articulating this. So let's call this the, we'll call it the ac accumulator. Um, so accum for short. And let's start at zero. So I'm gonna say that it needs a default value. So accum, so this is initial. We're going to return, because you always have to return uh, any ASL construct. And what it'll be is a loop where we modif we maybe modify something. Or maybe we can just call it. Let's just write it directly. So we're going to say, let's go to some value. This is our frequency. Um, over... 0.1 seconds. We'll make it relatively fast. And it'll be, it'll interpolate linearly. So it'll go, it'll like slowly move there. The question is, what, what do we put in here? It's going to be a dynamic variable because it's something we want to change. And let's call it freak because it's, it represents the frequency. And we're going to start it at whatever the initial value is. Right, so right now this is not exciting. This is, if we run this, it should work, but it's just going to maintain uh, that same pitch. Meanwhile, this ASL is running. It's, it's a loop. It, it runs 10 times a second with like 0.1, every 0.1 of a second it executes again, but nothing changes here. So what I think we can do is we could add a step um, so if we put in a number, it's going to do exactly what we've just been doing, right? Um, it's just going to like, it's going to start rising and at some point it's going to hurt our ears. Sure. Okay. So that happens. It works. Uh, it's not nice, but what we can do is we can actually make this internal variable itself dynamically controlled. 
And I think that's what will make this interesting, right? So we can say, we can make a new dyne, which is the, let's call it the ink, like the increment. Um, and I'm gonna start it at zero. So if I run this, if I run this now, we just have a static tone. But what we can do now is we have control over that increment value from a REPL in, in this moment. We can later like build something else to control it. But we can say output one, dine, uh, dot ink, so that's this, this name over here. And if we set it to zero, it's gonna not change, right? But just to show that we can make it not change. But let's, let's have it increase. And I set it back to zero and it stops. Uh, and now I can say decrease, but by like much faster. So maybe you can see that this is very quickly gonna like give us some kind of tools with which to build uh, to build these kind of like um, so like modifying sequences. I I'm gonna speed it up a little bit. Let's go a hundred times a second. And what that's gonna do is make this number more sensitive. Uh, so rather than 0.1, it'll be 0 0.01. So this is nice. We can we can set a number, or we can we can modify a number continuously. One thing that we also have access to um, is the frequency itself. So we can directly set it like this uh, using the the freak variable we created over here. Um, so we can just set it directly. So at this point, what this line does is like very. Uh, strange looking line for people that haven't written it before. It creates us a, a new way of interacting with the voltage outputs from Crow. Because this dot freak here, this is actually exactly dot volts, right? So why don't we change that? We can call it volts. And it has a slew time over here. Um, we could also make that slew, you know? So it kind of, it expands very quickly. Uh, obviously this interacts, uh, so that's maybe not the best way to do it, but. without the, the quantizer, but I was thinking it might make it easy to make some interesting sounds. Maybe we'll put in a real scale.
so this is kind of nothing new. But we can go... Oh yeah, it's like... Why don't we hook it up to an input? Okay, so... The input mode... Let's go to... Stream. And we're going to check it every... Like a hundred times a second. So just friends in shape mode always is positive. Um, so what, let's try and do. Let's uh, slow it all the way down and go into sound mode because it's bipolar. Moves in both directions. All right, it's still kind of fast, and it's obviously it's out of range, so we can. Uh, Oh, right, I did that wrong. <laughs> Never mind, we'll restart. Alright, I'm not sure if you can really see this, but this rightmost Just Friends channel, uh, as the light turns on, the frequency rises, and as it turns off, it goes down. But it does it in a way... It does it in a way that it isn't directly voltage controlling. It's like, it's incrementing a counter. So... If we insert some kind of uh, amount control, we can kind of turn it off. We can stop it from going uh, in that... Stop it from going any further. I don't have any more... Uh, I only have one cold Mac in here, it's so sad. Uh, but I think this, I don't know, it's kind of an interesting idea. Um, another one you could do is just to kind of like, have one input be increase and another input be decrease. All right, let me uh, read this comment. Okay, so IOFLOW, um, can this... Can this kind of frequency modification, the stuff that we're doing to the voltage, to the volt per octave output, can it be applied to an oscillator internally in Crow? The answer... Yeah. Absolutely. Um, the thing you won't get... No, it, it totally works. Yeah, I mean, why don't we try it? Um, we'll try that and then I have like one more like pretty totally different thing I want to kind of work on. So let's go... We can, let's use the fourth output. It's going to be a new part of the voice. Okay, so uh, output for let's do like the 
input dfreq for dynamic frequency. Uh, I'm going to start it at 440 hertz, just because that's annoying. <laughs> but like, I feel like it's a frequency we've all lost sensitivity to because <laughs> we've heard it too much. Okay, so let's make a function uh, called dfreq. It's going to take a initial hertz value. And we're going to return a loop. Uh, do we need to make it a... I actually don't even think we need to make it a whole new function. I think... We can use it directly inside of oscillate. So the first variable here is the frequency. The second variable is the amplitude. And then the third is the wave shape. Uh, it defaults to sine wave, so let's leave it as a sine wave. This might be loud. I'll turn it down. frequency here, it's set to 440. Um, let's start by turning it into a dynamic variable, right? So let's call it freak, and we'll say 440. So now that gives us dynamic control over frequency. <laughs> okay, uh, 
So it got too high, basically, I think was the issue. Um, because this, this number is getting multiplied 440 times a second. Uh, which is maybe why you would introduce uh, the kind of thing I did down uh, in this wiggle function, is this, like, you have a counter, so it will only apply the modification every time. Um, I agree, it's probably overkill, um, but I think it's an interesting, it's an interesting thought experiment. Maybe somebody out there can kind of figure out a nice interface into it where it doesn't feel, uh, where it isn't as uh, difficult to control, which I think is the issue. I really like this, this is meandering oscillator in the background. Uh, Okay, so the last thing I want to do, something I've been meaning to do, I think I even wrote up a whole script about it um, in the new Bowery. Uh, I want to... I want to make like a, a Crow script that kind of emulates one of the functions of Just Friends. So I'm going to save this uh, as JF. So we have like, I can delete everything basically. <laughs> So back to starting from scratch, we're now going to need that function, but I don't want to start it yet because we can have this play in the background, it's nice. One thing we're going to need here is some way to mix these voices, so you can't mix all the audio together uh, on Crow itself, you, you kind of have to like find a way to mix them externally. So we'll probably just do that with Cold Mac um, once we get there. But the fundamental idea is we want to say for all four voices, um, we want to set each one to oscillate uh, at some frequency. Um, and we'll figure out what that frequency is at some point shortly. And we also, what we want to do is we want to control the Well, we can voltage control. Uh, the, the two main parameters I want to do are frequency, um, so for all, vo all voices, and then a second one for intone. Um, but we can, I think, come to that later. So we have to do it live. Perfect. Um, how long do we have? 12 minutes. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's start with a frequency, right? Um, so let's give it a dime, freak, 100 hertz. Alright, so this is doing some frequency modulation, but we can... Uh, Sound there. Yeah, channel A. I really need to fix this case. It's literally falling apart. <laughs> oh. Okay. So.
Okay, so there is a there's a tone there. It's just very low. All right, we can hear that, right? Cool. Um, should be I. Okay, so we have all four voices oscillating. Uh, what we can do here is we can actually um, multiply by i. So this will at least initialize the voices with um, with the first four harmonics. So this is the first four harmonics. Um, uh, okay, so yeah, let's just make it. Let's make a function, right? So it's going to be called intone. It's going to take a uh, value. Call it B, and it's going to be in the range. Um, B is in the range of negative one to one. And when it happens, uh, we're going to set dynamic variable of all four voices. So we're going to say output dot i dot dyne dot freak equals. We're going to start with a hundred. Um, Multiply that. Well, let's start with i again. So this uh, i is the number. Um, so i represents which voice index it is. So here it is uh, one, two, three, four. Um, what we want to do with v is basically. So I think we, if we just think V is always going to be 1, um, wait, how do I do this? Uh, <laughs> I'm, oh no, I have to open my own reference because I simply don't remember how to do this. right or not. Let's just, uh, um, let's try it out. So this will be exactly the same, I think, because we haven't done anything with V. Right? So if instead we made this V, this is going to change all four voices, uh, regardless of which index they are. So we don't want that. What we want is to what multiply v by i. This is not it, but it's on the way to being it. So one way to debug is we can print channel and then v times i. Okay, so this is saying when we send in a value of 1, we're getting those uh, numbers, which is actually correct. This is our problem, is we want 0 not to give us 0, but indeed to give us 
uh, multiplier of 1. Okay, so... subtract one bingo okay so that's that's the equation for the, the magical just friends equation so we can set intone to be zero let's uh, increase the frequency a little bit so it's easier to hear We don't have a way to do that yet, that's fine. If we set it to 0.5, we get this interesting uh, set of harmonics that, that aren't the first, the first set. So I've updated this function, so now it takes a frequency, a bass frequency, and then an intone value.
So I just wanna I wanna voltage control it. I feel I feel like it's necessary. Oh this is already there, cool. So let's just make a simple input one dot mode stream zero point zero one. And now we set the input mode stream function to be in turn. Let's use uh, 220 hertz and shape uh, V divided by two. Turn off the print. I don't know why I didn't. Uh... Okay, it's not the whole Just Friends algorithm, but it's it's an interesting part of it. Uh, this only works with positive values of intone. The negative one is very similar, it's just like an inversion. Um, but yeah, that's a... Uh, that's my little attempt at like a using dynamic variables to like emulate something uh, a little more a little abstract and like a little different than what you might normally see. But to me this feels this feels fun. That's enough for me. Okay, that's uh, that's my cue to stop because I just crashed. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Well, I hope that that was at least uh, illustrative of what you can do with uh, with Dyn, uh, the dynamic variables in ASL. Uh, there's still work to be done. You know, it's not perfect yet. Um, maybe it never will be. But uh, it's been. It's been fun exploring it, and I hope that it's given you some ideas for like what you can do with this in the future. So, you know, uh, 
send me send me things you make like I, I always love to see like little movies or like recordings of stuff like this um happy to uh code review anything anybody writes for it as well if you if you want some perspective outside of your own um great okay well thank you there's only one more uh one more maps left and of this this season the summer summer 2021 um it's going to it's going to mostly be a performance um i will not be here in the studio uh two weeks from now so i'm gonna have to pre-record it but i'll, I'll be still be streaming it live um, from wherever it is I am uh, in the northeast of the U.S. Um, and we can we can hang out and chat and hopefully there will be some interesting ideas in the performance to, uh, to kind of talk about and stuff like that. All right, uh, it's been a pleasure and I will see you all in two weeks. Thanks for sticking by, stopping by, sticking around.